Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna unbox and set up the brand new ReefBot Lab from Reef Kinetics. All right guys, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And today we're gonna to dive into something that I am an absolute fanboy of, and that is reef tank automation. And uh, I guess the uh, story of the last few years has been parameter testing automation. And whilst there has been some huge developments and movements in the worlds of uh, probes that can test water without reagent, it's just not quite there yet. When the tried and proven method of using tritation test kits is absolutely rock solid. Now, the trouble with that is it can take some time to do a test with each different reagent when you've got to count drops or measure syringes and things. And that's where something like the Reef Bot Lab comes in. It is a robot that will automate that for you. It allows you to load up multiple different parameters or test kits into this machine, set a schedule of when and how often you want them to test, and Bob is your uncle. So today's episode, we're gonna unbox this unit. We're gonna load some uh, reagents in it. We're gonna set it up in the software, get it all running. And then in a couple weeks time, I will follow up with a review once I've had some time to let it run those tests. And I'll be able to let you know what I think the strengths and weaknesses of this device are. But uh, first things first, let's do the unboxing, have a good close look at it and see what makes this unit different from Reef Kinetic's previous tester before, which was the ReefBot itself. This one, the ReefBot Lab, has incorporated a number of features and we'll go over those when we have a look at the hardware once we get it out of the box. All right, here we have the ReefBot Lab from Reef Kinetics and um, straight out of the box, you can see this is a pretty large unit. So if you're trying to hook this up to a Nano, you're gonna need to have a pretty dedicated space for it. But um, it does just ooze some sort of commercialness to it. The, um, the shape, the uh, beautiful Allen bolts on top here, the uh, status light across the top, the simple to remove access covers here, which uh, lets you get to all of the uh, reagents there. Uh, super, super cool. And um, we can take all these covers off and have a look at the unit because this is the first time I've actually seen it. I've had a look at pictures online, but um, nothing's quite the same as when you take the covers off and have a look at the unit in person for the first time. Now I have discovered one of the new updated features of the unit here, and that is the 60 milliliter reagent holders. That's a big step forward because one thing that does make this unit a little bit different from alkalinity testers is this does use off the shelf reagents. And as you know, when you pick up a uh, Red Sea or a Salafit or an API test kit, you get these pretty small bottles of reagents. And um, if you're then putting them into pretty small vials of like 20 milliliters, if you do a test fairly frequently, you're gonna be filling up these vials fairly often. Now, these ones come with both the 20 mil reagents that you can, well, 20 mil bottles for reagents that you can load in there, but also these new design 60 milliliter ones, which are gonna obviously hold, if you do the maths, three times the amount of reagents, which means you're gonna be refilling them one third as often. Neat little improvement. All right, now with the top off, you can see some of the connections along the top of the unit here. And we'll start off with the wastewater. Obviously, after you've done a test, you wanna get rid of that water and the uh, reagent that's been used. So that goes off to your waste. In my case, I'll plumb that up to my skimmer cup because that is plumbed to the waste. Next up, we have an RODI feed for two reasons. One, we need to rinse the syringe and vials between tests but also some test kits actually do require RODI. And then obviously the last, but absolutely not the least, is the tank water connection. If you wanna test the water in your tank, you're gonna to need to get water from your tank into the device. Now from there, there's a couple of other connections here, which is super interesting. This four pin one here, I believe is a zero to 10 volt connector, which um, full disclosure, I have no idea what that does at the moment, but um, sounds like it has some interesting capabilities, maybe to control some various devices based on the results you get from your uh, test kits, which is pretty cool. We've got a uh, little button there. We've got an ethernet port, which is another one of the upgrades of this unit. You do not have to rely on Wi-Fi if the position of your tank is in a bit of a spotty Wi-Fi area. You can go ethernet there, which um, some people will love, some people will hate, but at least now you get the option. And then obviously last but not least, you get a power connector. Now. Apart from that, looking at the unit, you can see it's, um, 
it's pretty large. We've got quite a bit going on in here. I'm pretty keen to fire it up and see what um, what the device does. We've got a uh, syringe holder over here, which is, um, you can tell it is 3D printed, but it does appear to be a pretty high quality 3D print. So that's where your syringes are gonna go in there. You've got a uh, stir motor down here. There's a little magnetic drive there, which each of your reagent uh, holders or vials are gonna have a little magnetic stir bar inside them so that uh, the stir motor can give it a good stir first as if you, to replicate you shaking that uh, uh, that reagent before putting it into your test and then we have over here we'll have a uh, this will be the actual color this will be where they test the water for you so there'll be a color sensor in there looking to determine exactly what color the water has gone the same way you would refer to the color chart in the test kit or conversely it may actually measure the amount of reagent that's gone into the uh, into the chamber before it's changed color and then it will measure how much of that reagent's been used exactly the same way you would manually do the test kit and then next to it here we've got the rinsing vial which is basically where uh, you'll rinse out the syringe get all the uh, remnants of uh, the previous reagent out of there so you don't contaminate it before doing the next test or even just using the next reagent of the test you're currently doing. So the device makes sense. This uh, central section here looks as if it's going to be able to spin around. Obviously this uh, syringe section here, which goes up and down, will have to move around to get access to each and every one of the vials and then come back around to our uh, rinsing and testing chamber. But um, I don't know, something about seeing the motors in action that always gets me uh, excited. So I think the best thing to do now would put some power in this unit. We'll follow the uh, super simple quick to follow uh, instructions on how to set it up and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so following our super simple instructions, you can see we've got uh, over here, we've got uh, just a bit of an indication as to what each part of the machine is. And then we come across here to uh, the actual steps. So we've got unbox the machine, remove the styrofoam. We've done this, the vials and uh, stirrers, hoses, power supply, everything you need is actually in the uh, little box, which um, I've already taken out. And then uh, here we got a little message here, super important, cut the zip ties on the actuator. If I take that away, you can see we've got a couple of zip ties here. This is just to ensure that doesn't move in transit. Now that we're finished transit, we wanna cut those and uh, I'm assuming remove this bit of foam so that everything can move freely before we power it up. So I'm gonna grab some scissors and do that now. All right, now I can see why they zip tied that in because that moves oh so freely. Um, you wouldn't want that swinging around in transit. So uh, step one, or I guess if you count uh, taking the unit out of the box, step one is now done. And then uh, next up, it tells us to add one magnetic stirrer to the rinsing chamber and one to the testing, cha testing chamber and ensure that they're always there during calibration and performing any tests. So I've just got to um, grab one of those stirrers. I'll grab uh, two of those here, pop one into this chamber and one into that chamber. That step is now done. All right, next up it tells us to uh, connect up to power and uh, hook up our hoses and then uh, download the app. So I think it's probably time that um, I move this over to the tank, particularly if we're gonna hook up some hoses. So um, I'll go do that now and we'll get the camera there ready to go. All right, moment of truth. Let's uh, plug this bad boy in and um, see if we get some signs of life. Instantly you can see the uh, status lights lit up red, which probably makes sense. It's powered up for the first time. I can see the uh, little motor spinning around, going and checking the location of each of uh, those vial holders. Not that there's any vials in there yet, but it's uh, spinning around. And uh, is it going up and down? No, not yet. It has lifted up though. I know the uh, syringe holder was definitely lower before. So I guess it's locating the uh, testing chamber and um, I'm assuming that's its pre-warm-up done. We probably need to get the uh, app out now and uh, register this device. Then we can go about calibrating it, putting some reagents in it, and of course, uh, putting it to the test. So um, let's do that. Actually, just before we do go to my phone and setting up the app, I have to show you this little uh, sequence here of the uh, ReefBot saying that it is uh, ready and waiting to connect to Wi-Fi. I have to say, I normally don't go for gimmicky stuff like this, but... Uh, Damn, it looks cool. That light just circles around and around the reef bot. Looks absolutely the part if you're going for a futuristic setup, but uh, this will be hidden away in my cabinet. So, um, you know, it's probably not gonna make such a impact, but uh, I just had to share it with you. Anyway, guys, enough of that. Let me get onto my phone and let's set up this device in the app.
All right, we're gonna jump onto the Reef Kinetics app. If you don't have it yet, you can grab it from the Apple or the Android app store. I've already had it before and I've had a uh, Reef Bot on my tank, so I've already got my tank set up, but I'm going to add the Reef Bot lab to my uh, configuration. I'm gonna search for Bluetooth. I'm gonna find the device, click on that one. It's then gonna ask me to put in my Wi-Fi details. So I'm gonna select my Wi-Fi from the list. And then of course, enter the password. You can skip that if you are connected via ethernet. I'm gonna go for Wi-Fi and I'm not gonna share my Wi-Fi password with you. So we're just gonna scoot past that one. Give the device a second here to connect hook up to the cloud and do all those uh, modern day little handshake things that these uh, smart devices do. You can see we're connected successfully there. And by default, the name of your device is gonna be the serial number, which um, sounds a little Star Wars-y to me with the RKL0022. So I'm gonna rename it something much more of a mouthful in the Dream Reef Tank Reefbot Lab, just to keep uh, my uh, Foenetics working super hard. Now, after that, you're gonna get the option to select what tests you want to perform. Now, this is where you're gonna rip out your test kits and we'll switch over so I can show you the ones that I'm using on mine. I've got uh, the Salafit alkalinity test. I've got the uh, API saltwater nitrate test. I've got the Magnesium Pro from Red Sea. I've got the uh, Phosphate Pro from Red Sea. And you can see that we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, bottles there, which leaves me with three of the 12. I'm gonna just quickly rip those open now and fill up each one of those vials. Quick little tip for you guys playing at home. I like to take the label off each one of those reagents and put it onto the uh, bottle. You do actually get a set of labels from uh, the, the Reef Kinetics team, but I like to use the ones that actually come on the bottles. That way you know very quickly at a glance what brand that reagent is. And um, obviously I've sped this footage up, but it really only takes a couple minutes. Don't forget to give the bottles a shake. This is also why I recommend doing this on a uh, cloth or a bit of paper or outside because uh, a lot of these chemicals have a pretty strong, uh, strong color there, which will um, stain uh, bench tops and get you in a lot of trouble with your partner. So um, always do it on something like that, which uh, you can rinse out easily. All right, now that we have all of our vials filled up, we can select them in the app here. So alkalinity, we've got salifert. Then we can go down to the uh, next one that I've got there, which is a uh, nitrate, which is API nitrate. Then uh, I can select, let's see, what are we gonna go for next? I think uh, magnesium, we've got uh, the Red Sea Magnesium Pro. Must admit, I'm not sure on the Pro high resolution. I think that's if you wanna do a uh, even further depth test, but I'm gonna go for the standard Red Sea Magnesium Pro. Uh, phosphate, likewise, we've got a, a high range and a low range. I think I've got the low range, so uh, let's go with that one there. And then we get the chemical locations for each one of our vials, which you can load into the machine. Probably do this while you're looking at the app just to make sure you don't get them wrong, but um, obviously it's a little bit difficult to do here. I'm gonna click save and then uh, assign that ReefBot Lab to the Dream Reef Tank and we're good to go. But let's just switch back over to the device itself because there's a couple more steps we've got to do, primarily around uh, calibration and fitting up the syringes. So I've done the uh, syringe fitment here, which is just removing that one bolt there. You push the two syringes in and and uh, job done. I've done a RO calibration, which gets scarily full in that vial, but um, it did the trick and it did not flood, so happy days. Then it's just a matter of loading up each one of these vials, which um, you can see me doing here. I have to say, this is a little bit clunky on the reef bot, just because they go 360 degrees all the way around the device. And uh, when you've already got the, all the water tubes connected, that makes things a little bit awkward. All right, onto the fun stuff. Let's test this device out with the Salafit alkalinity test. So the first thing we need to do before doing any tests is to clean each one of these syringes. So the chamber on the left is filling up with RO water, and then we've cleaned the syringe on the left, give it a good stir, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, syringe on the right. Now, for those of you who do salifid alkalinity tests will know you need four milliliters of salt water from your tank. And we're gonna grab that from the actual color testing chamber. It's gonna fill up with salt water and then we're gonna use the syringe here to draw exactly four milliliters out. It'll then empty that chamber out and we'll squirt exactly that four milliliters back in. Next step is to grab four drops of that first reagent, which it's done nice and quickly. Then we're gonna go across 
We're gonna give the syringe a good rinse first because we're gonna use it on a different reagent now. So it's given a very nice clean there a couple of times. In fact, a few times just to make sure no cross-contamination. We'll then go across to the second reagent. We're gonna grab a full milliliter of that out. And then we're gonna start dropping that into the test chamber. And we're actually gonna go in so you can have a close look here. After each drop, you can see the chamber light up and it actually stirs and looks for that color change. And you can see the syringe or the robot is doing exactly what you would do when you're replicating this test at home. Now it's finished, it's got its result and it's basically just got to do the cleanup. So you can see it lift up, raise that uh, syringe out of the way. And of course do the cleanup to both syringes and the chambers themselves before giving us a result in which this one was 7.7 .7 DKH, which was exactly what my KH Guardian and my HANA checker said my results were. Once the test is complete, the result is pushed out to your mobile phone as well as sent to your email address. Now, I think those notifications are configurable, but those results are also stored in the app so you can view the history of your tests across multiple parameters. All right, so what makes the Reef Bot Lab different from the first iteration from Reef Kinetics in the Reef Bot? So I've conveniently got a, a little marketing email here. We're gonna scroll down through right till we get to the upgraded features because uh, there are quite a list here of things which make it a new and improved version. So first of all, we've got this design with a whole new heptagonal design with new mechanics which offer enhanced performance and faster results. I've got to say, I didn't notice faster results and to be honest, it doesn't bother me so much. When you're talking about automated testers like this, if it takes 40 to 45 minutes to do a test, that really doesn't bother me because it's not me doing it. In fact, I would set this up to test my phosphate in the middle of the night. So when I woke up, I knew exactly what my phosphate levels were and if I had to change the GFO or not. However, supposedly it is a bit quicker. Now this next one here, this does interest me. Reagent slots, more is always better, absolutely. And 12 reagent slots is super important because as you saw, with the choice of reagents that I went for. While some of them can be quite low in numbers in one or two reagents, a number of them are more. And if you're talking, you're looking at parameters that require three or even more reagents, you're gonna chew up those 12 slots quite quickly. And a big device like this with quite a decent outlay in cost, you want it to be able to test a number of results, not just one or two. So having 12 slots makes a huge difference. Now, one of the next things they talk about here is the new actuator, which is faster and has smaller resolution than the original ReefBot. That may be the case and it probably does. I didn't notice a huge difference on the speed, but um, it does look like it will have better resolution. Whether that really equates to much or not, I'm not sure. I think we're still limited to the accuracy of the test kits that we use. And to be honest, I'm only looking for ballpark figures with a device like this. I wanna know if my uh, phosphate's gone from 0.04 up to 0.1 or above. I don't really need to know if it's gone from 0.04 to 0.05, but if the improvements help do that, happy days. Now. We talk about more precision here with uh, higher resolution tritation tests. I don't know whether that's a, a hardware improvement or a software improvement, but um, either way, they are saying they can give you more fine resolution on the results, which is always good. This one's an interesting uh, choice of words. The reagent access, when I first saw this, I actually disagreed with it because uh, for me, putting the reagents in the machine uh, all the way around the unit actually was a little bit clunky. But then I saw what it actually talking about or what it actually means is that the needle is now able to reach the bottom of the vial to get the maximum amount of the reagent out there before you have to refill. And that is absolutely important. I know the original reef bot only went about halfway down the vial, so it didn't get caught up on the magnet and um, also didn't bottom that uh, syringe out on the bottom of the uh, vial and cause all sorts of troubles. This one gets down much further, which means it's gonna be much longer before you have to refill the uh, vials, which means you're gonna be spending a lot more time with automated results rather than doing maintenance on your automated tester. The next feature, this one's an interesting one, a reset button. I've never had the need for a reset button, but um, it's there if you need it. The device is supposedly quieter and I would say it probably is. I do not have the original ReefBot with me here, but um, I'd have to say even with the doors off the ReefBot lab that I have um, in the configuration I'm using at the moment, because I like to see what it's doing, it was not overly noisy. Um, would I do it when we were having dinner? Possibly not. I'd probably set most of these tests for times when I'm not at home, but um, if you were, I don't think the noise is gonna put you um, off at all. And then uh, a handy feature, the route safety, if the device finds 
runs any obstacles. So if uh, someone puts um, something in the tank or in your cabinet and uh, something falls in the way of the machine, rather than it just trying to brute force its way through, it'll actually stop and send you a notification, which is important. But um, one thing they don't talk about here, which um, surprises me, and for me, it's probably the biggest improvement of the device, is that it can now take these 60 mil reagent bottles and um, that's super, super important when, um, when you're talking about something like this that uh, can burn through a few mil at a time in a test. Um, you don't want to have to, if you're doing a test each day of calcium, for example, you don't want to have to refill the reagent every week. If you get three times the amount in those uh, large 60 mil vials, it means you're going to go three weeks instead of having to refill your reagents, which for me, automation is all about hands off. It's not about um, just moving the work from one task to another. So that's the massive improvement for me. Um, but uh, I will go through some of these details and more in the follow up video. But I uh, just wanted to run over some of the upgraded features just for now. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my unboxing setup and uh, I guess overview of this brand new ReefBot Lab from Reef Kinetics. If you wanna see how this device performs over a number of tests, over a number of weeks, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out. And of course, if there's anything you wanna see covered, whether it be a short, simple question or a highly in-depth one, please do pop into the comments section down below because I do go through each and every one of those comments and I will reply. But of course, I am also looking for things to cover in the follow-up video of this device rather than just saying, yes, it tested these elements and yes, it was accurate. If there's anything in specific you wanna know, be sure to let me know in that comment section down below. If you like what you've seen of the ReefBot Lab so far, you can use this discount code here. That will get you 100 US dollars off the pre-order price. Like I said, I will be doing a follow-up video on it, but if you wanna make sure you get in nice and early and don't miss out, I have to say what I've seen so far I like. There's been maybe a couple of just little edges that uh, maybe the Mastertronic has a little bit more polish on it too, but um, the ReefBot Lab has definitely come a long way from the ReefBot and I already liked the ReefBot. So the improvements on this device have shone through and it looks like a very solid contender for automation in your reef tank testing. So um, check out the website. I'll put the details in the uh, description below. Check it all out. Let me know if there's anything at all you wanna see covered and I'll cover that in the follow-up video to come out in a few weeks time after I've put this device through its paces and done a good, maybe a hundred or two tests through it and we'll just see how the things last on it, what sort of maintenance is required, how accurate it is across a range of test kits and other things that you guys come up with. Anyway, guys, I'll wrap things up there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.